Next move. This is, this is one of my vehicles here, it's a very poor picture, but if you notice, this part here is where the filter is in the back, the cell somewhere on this side of the engine, and I ran my hose close to the air intake possible to the engine. So that, that plastic, uh, it's sometimes you see it, it'll look very thin, but the average plastic is about an eighth of an inch thick, and that's enough to thread. I take a tap, uh, I, did, I did a tap there, I, oh by the way, I took it out. I took out the air duct out of the automobile so I could drill it so none of that crap goes into the engine. Um, so it's very important. I took it out. You know, it's just a couple of clamps. I had a clamp over here and a clamp down here, a couple of screws. Took it out, drilled it, tapped it, put it back on. You don't want no, no, no debris going into the engine. That could be bad for your engine. Um, okay. Things you'll need to know about installing the HHO generator in the automobile. This is gonna go into now detail. Don't be confused, don't be concerned. We can repeat it, you can ask questions later on, you can write it. If you have a computer, you can, you can download this. Um, couple things, control circuit, very important. Uh, control circuit, this circuit will be the one controlling the cell on or off operation. This will be done with a signal that is energized when the engine is running. I see a lot of people install IG show generators and they say, oh, I got this little switch. I turn my car on, turn the switch on, yeah, we're running it. That's fine. It works. Until you forget to turn the switch off. And it will. It's that question of if you forget, when you forget, or some little kid comes into the car, hey, look at this switch, look at this switch, look at this switch. And there you go. You're producing uh, HHO when you don't want it. Now, uh, it's not as dangerous as it sounds until you're having a little bit of accumulation and you try to turn on your car and you get a back flat and boof, boof, you know, and you, maybe your, uh, your air duct goes off or something like that. No, worst case scenario. Anyway, just be careful. We, need, we, we like to tell people, install it so that you don't have to remember to turn it on or off. It's very important. But, uh, the power circuit. This is the circuit that will deliver the high power demand electricity to drive the cell. The circuit begins at the battery or at the fuel box, power, uh, uh, power side of the, uh, oh, I'm sorry, a uh, fuel power, and they'll usually pick a wire. And the wire size will be determined by the cell demand. You know, some cells you have running at two, three amps, you could use 12 gauge wire. But if you have a cell that's going to demand 25 amps, you're going to need heavier wire. So the power circuit will, will be determined, or the size of the, the wire will be determined by the type of cell that you're using. I always recommend go higher. If you're gonna run 20 amp cell, go to a 40 amp wire. I mean, just to make sure that you know, you're safe. Okay, just to give you an idea. There are a lot of people who don't know this. Uh, example of wiring. If you're using three amps, 18 gauge wire is fine. But if you're using 30 amps, this, uh, uh, um, a 10 gauge wire can go up to 40 amp cell. Just as we say, but if you're running somewhere around uh, around 30 amp cell, you need a decent size wire, it's about 10 gauges, uh, number 10 gauge wire. So it's very important. Uh, little note: make sure that you select the wire that's automotive grade. House wiring will do, however, they're not as flexible most of the time. They're thicker wire; they have, they have thinner coating on the outside, um, and they're a little bit more rigid. Marine wire or automotive wire is a little bit more flexible, and they have a thicker uh, uh, casing and a lot of, and then most of the time they're more uh, heat resistant. So, very important. Always use, use larger gauge wire to avoid power demand problems. The bigger the wire, the more power you carry, you have less issues. Is there a problem way too big? No, other than space and, and, and restrictions to you know, clamping terminals on. But uh, you know you don't want to go you don't want to go with a with a, with a, with a six gauge wire because you can't bend it. But you don't. The, the better the, the bigger the wire, the better. Uh, if you have a good crimper, and that is important, you know people say tools are tools, but if you have a good crimper, you won't have a problem. Um, if you buy a crimper at the Walmart, not gonna be uh, you know maybe a good connection. You have to be careful with your connections. And I go into those numbers. Uh, Nose. When you choose wire size, I already said that before, the, the higher the number, the, the thicker the wire, the capacity rating depends on the size of the wire. 
Number two, all of the controls and, uh, and the power circuit devices, just like the wires, have power demand ratings. If you're using uh, a relay or a connector or a um, breaker or a fuse, all these things have uh, power ratings on it. So you can't use a uh, fuse that can only carry 10 amps with a wire, you know, or, or with the man is coming, can we carry 25 amps because it will work. It'll work for a few seconds, but it'll melt, it'll, it'll mess up. So when you're choosing your, your, your controls, the, the devices that you're going to be hooking up, make sure that the rating on those is equal to or more than you. Uh, make sure that the connections are solid. No loose connections. Loose connections tend to heat up. And it, it, although everything is correct, the wire size and the connectors are correct, if you have a loose connection, you'll have a problem. So make sure you're fixing uh, <clears throat> Work with caution when working with any electricity or electrical components. The electricity in the automobile is only 12 volts DC. Therefore, the electrical shock is un un no, very unlikely. You're not going to get if you're hurt by working with 12 volts in your car. It's pretty safe. To the body. However, it's not safe for components. If you put the wrong component on or you wire it the wrong way, it will melt. And not only that, you can affect other components in your vehicle if you do the wrong thing. So it is more it's more of a danger to your car than to yourself. In other words, if you do the wrong thing. So be safe. We just say, you know, keep it simple. Keep it simple. And I always tell people, ask questions. Don't be afraid to ask questions. Let's begin. We're going to begin with a control circuit. Simple circuit. Crucial. Very important. Because this is the control, the, the circuit that's going to control your system. Identify the fuse panel, look for an engine power fuel, uh, uh, the engine power, or fuel pump, or no two sensor heater, or any circuit that is energized when the engine is running. Has to be only when the engine is running. You know, a lot of people will help hook it up to an auxiliary switch. When you have your engine or your key on auxiliary, you should not have power to yourself because it will come on. So we want systems that are only on when the engine is running. You can tap into these circuits using an inline wire connector. So you're going to decide which wire you're going to use of the fuse panel, but then you can use something like that. It's a connector. It's a very simple to use connector. It's very easy to use. The, the, the wire that's that you're going to hook up to run, could run through this without cutting it. You don't have to cut it. And then the wire you're adding to it goes into the other little hole. You crimp this with a pair of pliers, and your connection is done. Very simple, neat way to connect. This is actually removable. You know, without having to cut the wire, you can clip this on, add your wire, clip it together, you connect it. And if you have to remove it, you just split it apart. It's out. We, we do removing any evidence of what you did to the car without having to damage the car. In most cases, uh, uh, this circuit can be can be done with the uh, add, add a line. An add a line is my favorite uh, device to use when I'm adding a circuit, especially in the fuse box. Um, an add a line or an add a circuit is is um, a device that will looks like this that will attach to the fuse. You pull the fuse, what the fuse looks like, and by the way, there's a couple of different sizes in these things, so you can have to identify which one you have. You go to the auto store, you identify which one you have, and you identify which fuse you're gonna use. Say you're gonna use the fuel pump fuse uh, signal. The fuel pump only comes on when your engine is running. So when you turn your key, the fuse for the fuel pump is energized. What we do is we pull out the fuse, like this, pull it out of, out of the little fuse connector, you to drop this in here, this is the add a line, and it has two slots. You replace the fuse that you pulled out of it originally, add the new fuse, and this line begins the, becomes the beginning of your control circuit. Simple, easy, slick, quick, I mean, you can't beat it. You pull out a fuse, you drop in a fuse holder, add these two fuses, you're ready, your, your control circuit line is ready to go. In the event that you have to remove yourself from your car to add it to another car, you unplug it, plug your fuse back in, nothing ever happens.